Hello Internet, Dicequirk here, and today we're going to go over the weather, festivals, and history that has taken place and does take place every year in Japan in the month of November. And if you're new here, pleased to meet you. If you're returning from another video or you've seen some of my videos before, thanks for checking out my other videos. Seriously, it really helps out. Uh, and if you're just clicking on this for the first time, I want to let you know that these videos are meant to be not only informative, but also helpful in planning your own trip to Japan so that you could scope out different months of the year and figure out what's taking place during them and that way you can find the best month for you to travel to Japan. It also is a great way for you to kind of see what's taking place in the month and pick out different events that you would like to attend yourself. Also, if you find this video informative or helpful, please remember to smash that like button and leave us a comment on how we could do better in providing you with videos that help you experience Japan. Honestly, I try to respond to all of them. So, with that being said, let's not waste time and let's get to it. If you plan to visit Japan during November, then you're definitely not alone, as some parts of Japan see most of its foreign visitors and tourism take place during this month. Although it's chilly, many people go to Japan to visit because of the cooler temperatures and little to no rainfall, which allows for a large number of both indoor and outdoor activities. Across the major cities of Honshu and Kyushu, you'll find that the average temperature ranges from an average high of 63 degrees to an average low of about 50 degrees Fahrenheit which is still way better than Sapporo and Hokkaido, which has an average high of 46 degrees Fahrenheit and an average low of 34 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can guess, the temperature continues to drop as you continue to go north of Sapporo. So, if you're planning on visiting uh, some of these places near central and southern Japan, just remember to bring a jacket. Of course, if you live in a pretty cold place like me, then you might think that 60 degrees is quite comfortable. So. Just make sure that you don't pack anything too heavy, because midday to early evening uh, in mid-November, it can be quite comfortable without one. On my last trip to Japan, I was actually wearing my coat in the morning, and then I was smashing it into my backpack about halfway into midday, because it was just getting so hot with that sun beating down on us. Speaking of smashing, don't forget to smash that like button if you find this informative or helpful. Now. Autumn's weather actually leads into two things that November is really known for in Japan, and that's Momiji Gari and illumination events. We'll start with Momiji Gari. The word Momiji Gari means autumn leaf hunting. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with that kind of hunting. Okay, good. Naturally, as you guessed, it's all about going to different locations and regions to view the colorful falling leaves. And there's tons of different festivals that actually celebrate Momiji Gari, as well as a bunch of excellent locations for you to go autumn leaf hunting. There's the Karuizawa Momiji Festival. There's the Arashiyama Momiji Festival, which would be pretty interesting because it has the Arashiyama bamboo forest really close by. There's also the Fujikawa Gi Fujikawa Guchiko uh, Fest Momiji. There's also the Fujikawa. I can't tell you how many times I've had to repeat this. <laughs> Fujikawa Gojikiko? What is There's that? also the Fujikawa Gujiko. <laughs> There's also the Fujikawa Gujiko Autumn Leaves Festival. Finally, which takes place at uh, Lake Kawaguchi. It's a great location. It's located at one of the base lakes uh, of Mount Fuji. So you can go visit, get the awesome food that's there, and then also check out the awesome uh, autumn leaves and everything that's taking place, uh, all the colorful leaves, with Mount Fuji in the background. Probably a great location to get some great photos. Sorry, that took me forever. Try saying that three times fast. Fujikawa Kawaguchi. Fujikawa Kawaguchi. Fujikawa Kawaguchi. And one more location that I would like to mention that you should make sure you visit is the Kiyomizadera Temple. Which, if you already didn't know, uh, Kiyomiza Dera Temple is a temple that's right on a mountainside with a huge balcony where you can overlook the entire mountainside and see the city. Uh, so, awesome place to go visiting uh, for checking out not only the view, but also to do some Momiji Gari. Not to mention you can take a ride down to the Meiji Jingu Gaien Stadium, which also has a large number of ginkgo trees. And some believe that it's uh, Tokyo's most visited Momijigari location. And back to Kiyomizadera, 
uh, this location actually participates in the second most popular type of event that you'll find in November in Japan, which is illumination events. At Kiyu Miyazadera, the entire temple is lit up with different lights coming from different angles and stuff, uh, which just makes it a beautiful view at night and a great place for getting some photos. Kiyo Miyazadera Temple is lit up from mid-November to late December. And here's a quick list of a few more light illumination events, which, if you're in the area, I would definitely recommend checking out. And please uh, keep in mind that these light illumination events tend to have dates that vary from year to year, so make sure you check that out. There's the Light of Versailles Winter Illumination, which takes place from late October to late March at the Gotemba Kogen Toki Sumika in Shizuoka. Every evening, there are light shows featuring fountains, water, and lights that go on every half hour uh, from about 4.30 to 9-ish p.m. Times can change, so make sure you look into this before you visit. This show does cost 1,000 yen for adults and 200 yen for children. Then there's the Himeji Castle Illumination and Saijiki Art Exhibition. Uh, which takes place from early to late November. At this illumination, you can see Japan's most famous castle lit up for just 600 yen, which is an entrance fee to enter the castle. And although the entry fee to the art exhibition is an additional 500 yen that goes on top of your castle entrance fee, it's only setting you back about $11, so it's pretty worth it. Now, if you really love trees filled with lights and other light events, make sure you check out the Osaka Festival of Lights, which is more like two huge light shows. First, there's the Mido Suji Illumination, which hosts the street with the most illuminated trees in the world. Between Oebashi Kitazune uh, intersection and the Hashin Mai intersection, there are four kilometers of roads uh, with trees loaded with lights. This takes place from early November until the end of the year. In addition, there's the Hikari Renaissance Illumination, where there's a projection show that takes place on the side of the Nakanoshima Library. This event can have a wide range of possible dates, so make sure that you check online before you book your trip. And make sure that you take advantage of this cool two-for-one illumination event in Osaka, anywhere from November 12th to December 31st. There's also the Nagasaki Christmas Illuminations, which typically starts early November and goes well into the following year. In Nagasaki, you can see some incredible displays of lights at the Hosu Ten Bosu theme park. And if you're a Christian, Nagasaki is known for its history of housing hidden Christian believers during the Japanese isolation when Christianity was outlawed in Japan. There's really a lot that you can learn about the history of Christianity in Japan uh, in Nagasaki, so I'd recommend checking it out. And there are plenty of other illumination events that take place throughout the country of Japan, but I couldn't hope to mention all of them in this video. So let's look at some other more regular kinds of festivals, uh, like the Karatsukunshi Festival, which takes place in Kyushu, Japan from November 2nd to November 4th. Uh, at this festival, the people uh, celebrate a 400-year-old tradition of celebrating the bountiful harvest that took place in the year prior. Sounds awfully familiar. But we'll ignore that. So, check out the huge Hishiyama which are carried from Karatsu Shrine down to Nishino Beach. The floats include a killer whale and the legendary Urashiyama Taro. And the event takes place at the same time as the Saga International Balloon Fiesta. So. While you're enjoying the festival and checking out all of the Hikiyama, you can also expect to see a number of hot air balloons in the sky. That sounds like a pretty cool event. Now, if you're into trying finely tuned and expertly crafted Japanese food, I recommend that you either try one of these two events, either the Hiroshima Ramen Stadium, which takes place on November 2nd, or the Utsu... There we go. The Utsunomiya Gyoza Festival. Now, if you have to choose between the Hiroshima Ramen uh, Stadium and the Utsunomiya Gyoza Festival, I personally would recommend the Utsunomiya Gyoza Festival because, first off, Utsunomiya is known for its uh, gyoza throughout all of Japan, uh, for having the best gyoza in all of Japan. And, not only that, three gyoza for 100 yen? That's a steal! <laughs> That's excellent! Now, if you're interested in trying food from all around the world, I would definitely recommend the Ube Festival, which usually takes place the same time, uh, November 3rd through November 4th, and also starts at around 5 p.m. and goes until 9 p.m. 
Typically at the Ube Festival on the first day, you would experience things like an Ube drum performance, uh, dance performances, and Japanese comedy. But what may interest you even more is that at this event, there's over 40 different food vendors, which sell tons of different food from Vietnamese to Thai, Persian, Chinese food, and so much more. Just be careful though, and be warned, more than 200,000 people typically attend this event each year. So be warned, it may be crowded. Also taking place on November 3rd is the He Watari Festival, which takes place on the day of winter solstice. Uh, at Ibaraki's Mount Kaba, you can find barefoot monks walking through smoldering fire while chanting prayers. The whole event actually makes for quite a spectacular sight. Visitors can also try walking in the footsteps of the priests, but only after most of the fire has been put out. Also, uh, having said that, I just want to make sure I clear up so I don't give a bad impression or a false impression. The priests aren't walking like directly on flames. They typically separate the fire, pat it, and then walk on the remnants of the flames. It's still a really cool event and you should definitely check it out. Next is the Tokushima Yokai Festival, which takes place on November 25th. It was first held in 2000 at Miyoshi City. At this festival, participants wear handmade costumes of traditional yokai characters. And there traditionally is a parade that takes place just about at 1 p.m. And if you want to participate, guess what? You can, as long as you have a costume. And if you don't know what yokai are, or you're just interested in yokai, you can check out our other video where we talk about what yokai are and we also give a fun quiz so that you can test your skills and your knowledge of yokai. So check that out in the card above. And the last event which I am super excited for is the Grand Sumo Tournament. Each year there are six sumo tournaments that take place throughout the year and the tournament that takes place in November is the last tournament of the year. As for myself, I have recently become a huge fan of watching sumo and I actually in fact had a good friend of mine from a bible study send me some sumo cards so shout out to you man, I love it. You can watch sumo highlights on NHK or online uh, but if you're in Japan and actually have the opportunity to see it in person, just remember that sumo matches on the first days of the tournament the last days of the tournament and on days with highlight matches are much more difficult uh, to get into. So make sure you keep that in mind while you try to pick up your own tickets. Next, it's time for this month in history. Well, Japan's history, that is. November 17th, 1183, the Battle of Mizushima. Japanese Taira clan defeat the Minamoto clan. Now this is a pretty interesting battle. It took place during the Genpei War at near the end of the Heian period. The Taira defended an important base called Yashima. Part of how they defeated the Minamoto clan was due to them attaching boats together with planks and rope so that they could shoot arrows. They also brought fully equipped cavalry onto the ships and used them to swim to shore, routing the Minamoto forces that had made it to the land. Talk about planning for success. That's kind of incredible. November 19th, 1274. The Mongol army lands at Hakata Bay in Japan during the first invasion attempt and are defeated. Like I mentioned in our October video, when I discussed the historical accuracy uh, used in Ghost of Tsushima, the Battle of Tsushima wasn't really won by a single man like the game suggests, but instead it was won by two events, um, this one included, where weather or kamikaze, uh, divine wind, took care of the enemy for them. Eh, don't mess with Mother Nature. November 30th, 1908. The U.S. Secretary of State and Japan's ambassador uh, to the U.S. exchanged notes in what becomes known as the Root Takahira Agreement. Uh, they affirmed support for an independent China with an open door policy and for the status quo in the Pacific. The document actually led to a diminishing of influence for America and in East Asia. Essentially, the document was an agreement or an acknowledgement uh, between the U.S. and Japan over which territories belonged to who, as well as making sure that both sides kept China or China accessible uh, to other nations for free trade. November 4th, 1921. Japanese Prime Minister Hara Takashi is assassinated in Tokyo on November 25th in 1922. The Crown Prince Hirohito of Japan becomes the Regent of Japan in his ailing father's steed. November 25th, 1930. 
Ito, Japan records 690 earthquake shocks in one day. That's a lot by default. Okay, maybe I'm not taking the magnitude of this situation seriously enough. I can't shake the feeling that this wasn't a good joke, but I had to take a crack at it. <laughs> okay, moving on. November 29th, 1933, Japan begins persecution of communists. November 15th, 1936, Nazi Germany and Japan sign the anti comintern Act. November 3rd, 1946, Emperor Hirohito proclaims a new Japanese constitution. And finally, November 12th, 1990, Crown Prince Akihito is formally installed as Emperor Akihito of Japan, becoming the 125th Japanese monarch. And so that's all for... This month in history. Well, Japan's history, that is. Well, thank you for checking out this video. Uh, if you liked the content, found it informative, or found something useful out of it, please remember to smash that like button, as well as hit the notification bell and turn on notifications. Uh, right here, we're all about helping you experience Japan, and even though we can't go there at this moment, we want to help prepare you so that the very moment that you can go, you're prepped and you're good to go. Now, if you're really interested in planning your own trip to Japan, I would really recommend checking out this video up here. Uh, we're going to give you a really easy to follow step-by-step -step plan so that you can prep your entire trip. Now, honestly, you might not be able to go this very second, but imagine if you planned in your free time now for a trip in the future. You could have an amazing trip and it could be done super easily. So, don't forget to click that card up above. Uh, make sure you check that out. And also, if there's anything that we can make videos for you about uh, related to Japan, its culture, or anything, or if there's something you think would improve this channel, then please let us know in the comments. Honestly, I do read them all, and I'll be sure to check them out. So, thank you all so much, and with all that said, Dice Quirk, out. <laughs>